Hi guys, this is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to share with you some ideas for making buying and selling a home less stressful because it it is a pretty big life event, it's really hard on families, it's just, it creates a lot of stress even though it's something exciting it, and normally it's something that's a really good thing and you're normally upgrading to maybe more land which is the case for us but even so it's a huge change and it can be very stressful. So going through this whole process very recently, we actually only moved last weekend. This is all very fresh in my mind and I have some ideas of maybe things I maybe should have done better as well as things I did that definitely helped a lot. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys and let's get right into it. So the first thing I wrote down on my list is to hire a good realtor. I am not someone who is very outgoing at all. I'm actually a very introverted person. I'm not someone who's very forceful with their opinions. I kind of had a, have a hard time sticking up for myself in a way, which I know it might be hard to believe for you guys that I'm not extroverted since I talk during my entire videos and I don't seem to have a hard time talking to a camera, but I actually am pretty introverted. I also somewhat wear my heart on my sleeve with a lot of things. So I feel like if we didn't have a good realtor to represent us and to kind of keep me in check a little bit, I would really mess up a lot of our real estate negotiations. Because I'm the crazy lady who loudly announces I love it in front of the seller's agent when we're looking at a house, which is don't do that. Don't be like me. You want to kind of keep that on the down low so they think maybe you're not as interested and then they'll consider a lower offer. But I'm super blessed to have a really excellent real estate agent as my mother. She's been a realtor for many, many years. She was a realtor back in Phoenix, so she's really good at what she does. And she is also, that we're kind of opposites when it comes to personality. She's very outgoing and extroverted and she really sticks up for herself and for her clients. And I feel like if I didn't have that, it would have just gone badly because I couldn't have handled all that and she just handled all the really stressful negotiation part and took a lot of stress off of us so that's something I feel like that's a really good idea is to hire a realtor you can really trust and you can depend on to give you good advice and you can depend on to do all the kind of grunt work when it comes to nego negotiations and dealing with the seller's agent and all of that stuff is really important. Number two is simplify things with your children as much as possible. So by that I mean that you are gonna have so much more on your plate when you are listing your house. You're going to have to keep the house spotlessly clean for, for showings, for pictures. You have to, once the house actually sells, you have to pack. It's just gonna be like craziness. So anything you can try to take off your plate is going to be a huge help and in kind of like minimizing the stressfulness of it. So try to simplify and streamline as many things as possible. One of the things I did with our kids was actually switch from cloth diapers to disposables during this process, which me being an avid cloth diaper and someone who's very passionate about it and someone who's completely exclusively cloth diapered two children. That was a very hard pill for me to swallow that I, I just needed to back off a little bit and not be so stubborn. That was actually really hard for me to do because I really believe in it and it's just, I'm really stubborn when it comes to stuff like that and it was hard for me to do the disposables and see diaper after diaper going into the trash can. I'm like, these could have just been washed. <laughs> but I couldn't handle washing diapers every day because I was, I have two kids and my daughter's still partly in cloth diapers. So I have to wash diapers pretty much every day, at least every other day. And I couldn't quite handle washing the diapers every day while keeping the house spotlessly clean and being gone like all day for showings. And I would have had to take the dirty diapers with me and if they were ready, in, in the, it, it was just, it was overwhelming to think about to say the least. And I also didn't want to have to take dirty poopy diapers in the car while we were stuck in the car during a showing, so. So as soon as we listed our house, I went out to the store and I bought a few big boxes of disposable diapers. Thankfully, my kids are both in the same size of cloth diapers because my 
younger one is a really big boy and my oldest one is a really little petite girl so they wear the same size diapers and I just bit the bullet and even though it was really hard for me I just did disposables like until today was the first day back to cloth officially because we're moved in enough I feel like I can handle it. I also did things like keep less toys downstairs just more of their toys were in the chest upstairs that they can't really get to just to make cleaning up easier. I made some more snacky things that were really easy and really easy to clean up and things that they could have in the car. Just try to, you know, just simplify is the best word I can think of things as much as possible and so that you're not like trying to do too many things with your kids and getting stressed out and yelling at them more. It's just not worth it. Number three is lower your expectations of like everything in your life. <laughs> just assume all you're gonna be able to do is keep your house clean for showings, if that, and keep your family alive. Like that's it. Just like lower your expectations all the way down because then if you can get more than that done, you'll be more proud of yourself. <laughs> Especially with little kids, keeping the house constantly clean for showings is quite the feat. Let me tell you what. I have a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and I'm 27 weeks pregnant with our third, and little kids just seem to emit crumbs everywhere. I don't even know where they get so much dirt and crumbs, but as soon as I sweep the floor, it's like dirty again. Like 30 seconds later, because the kid walked across, I'm like, where did you get that amount of crumbs off your body? It's ridiculous. So I had to really lower my expectations of what I could do, like, because normally I will make all of our meals from scratch, fresh every night. I make all of our own soaps, I cloth diaper, I did less learning activities with the kids, I did less business stuff, I tried to stock up on videos before we listed the house, and even lowered my expectations of how much I'd be able to make my own coffee. I actually went to coffee stands quite a few times during the showing process, because I just couldn't stand the thought of getting our kitchen messy again after I had cleaned it so many times that day. And this goes for expectations about your family members as well. Just. Everyone's gonna be so stressed out during this time. Everything's gonna be different. Especially little kids just don't quite understand what's going on. They don't know why their routines change so much. It's really hard for them. So just expect that everyone's gonna be grumpy and not on their best behavior and just give everyone a lot of leeway and grace and very much lower your expectations will make it easier. The next idea is keep up with your self-care. During the pro this process, don't let your self-care slip up. I know it's tempting because you're going to be more tired, more busy, you're gonna have less time, and you're gonna be really tempted to just be like, well, I can just skip my yoga for today. It's no big deal. I'll start again afterwards. But a lot of things with self-care are things that really help keep your mood up and keep you keep you feeling motivated and so i feel like during a more stressful time in life is even more important to keep up with your self-care and as much of your normal routine as you can believe me because i actually made this this mistake i decided i would take a few weeks off of doing my yoga which i had been super consistent with up until then and i took some time off yoga and i still haven't started back it's ridiculous and i noticed a huge difference with my body feeling more tired, especially with me being pregnant. I was just, would get grumpy faster. Like being able to move your body helps release endorphins and it makes you happier. And even things like taking baths and putting on essential oils. I know it might seem like, oh, I don't have time. I should just like go clean something. But that is actually something that's important and that's going to help you function better so you can take care of your family without freaking out. So, as much as you can keep up with your normal self-care routine, do that. Prepare a bunch of freezer meals before you list your house. I actually didn't do this with the listing. I didn't prepare any meals before we listed, but I learned from my mistake and I prepared a bunch of meals before we moved. So, between the time we were doing showings, kind of in that in-between period, I made a whole bunch of meals and I froze them so that the week after we moved, we were unpacking and I couldn't find anything, I wouldn't have to worry about making any food at all. We would just have it all in the freezer and that was so nice. I wish I had done that during the listing phase too. But not having any freezer meals, we ended up eating a lot of smoothies and scrambled eggs, things that were like really easy to make and that didn't get the kitchen terribly messy because I was trying to just keep things as simple as possible and try not to make too many messes if I could avoid it. But as many freezer meals as you can possibly make, breakfast, lunches, dinners, even desserts, like you name it, like the more 
things you have prepared beforehand, the easier life is going to be. My next idea is to declutter and store things. So before we listed, my sister-in-law came over and helped me kind of rearrange our house, rearrange artwork, declutter some items that didn't look as nice, kind of clear out some space. We took our makeshift desk and TV out of the living room and kind of it kind of helped open up our living room since it's really small. We put up some gallery walls with artwork, rearranged the couch and chairs to make the living room feel bigger. One thing that she said was to clear out any items that were very like you, like I have a lot of things fermenting on the counter, so she said people might get, distract, get distracted by how weird it is to have a, a jar of kombucha sitting on your counter and it might distract them from actually looking at the house. So things that are like too much <laughs> you, just like put them in a cabinet, like put it away and so that people don't get distracted. Not that it's like a bad thing but you want people to just like be there to look at the house. The second thing she said to keep in mind was to go for a look in your house with the decor that was cute and attractive but minimalist enough that people could picture themselves living in your house. So not like too much artwork or too much furniture that was just like you want it, you want it to be nice and open and enough wall space still open that they could be like, oh, I could see like my couch there or I could see my picture hanging there. Like you want it to be decorated enough that it doesn't feel like really empty and weird but clear enough that you, they can picture themselves living in the house. So keeping those two tips in mind, I went through the whole house and kind of staged it. I cleared out everything I possibly could. We have all, we had a lot of canned goods storage upstairs and just a lot of extra things because we're homesteaders that are just like, yeah, people don't really need to see that and be distracted by it. So we actually ended up renting a storage unit and storing a lot of stuff in the storage unit, which was huge for making the house look better. It looked so much more clear. It looked like a staged house. It looked really good. I had a toddler join me from her nap. <laughs> She's got a nice big chunk of cheese, so hopefully she'll keep quiet-ish. So anyway, I wanted it to look as big and open as possible without looking too empty. Like not trying to be deceptive with the amount of space, but just like opening opening it up for people's imaginations while still making it look cute if any of that makes sense at all. So not only does this ha make your house look good for showings and letting people imagine themselves in the house, but it also clears out a lot of your stuff for when you do have to move. So a lot of the stuff that we packed up, it was packed and it was in a storage unit and we were able to send my brother and my dad with a horse trailer and they went and got it and it was like packed already. So I didn't have to like pack everything all at once. I packed some stuff before we listed. Okay, so before we listed and some stuff after we sold the house. And just having it more minimalist during showings, it just made the whole process easier. Broke up the packing, which was really nice, and yeah, so I highly recommend doing that. Next idea is plan for a lot of activities during showings. During the showing process, I kept telling Luke that we should like literally just go rent a hotel room and live there until the house sold because it was such a hassle like coming and going from our house all the time and getting the house dirty and as soon as we get home we would throw coats on the ground and it, and it was just like annoying coming and going so much that it would have made it like so much easier to just like get the house perfectly clean how I wanted it to be shown and then leave and like not come back and mess it up <laughs> like that would have made it so much easier but even though that's not realistic for us I still tried to plan for having us gone like all day if there was going to be showings even if there weren't showings like back to back all day i would still try to be gone for the whole the whole chunk for most of the day so a lot of times i would plan to just go to my mom's all day there's a lot of stuff for the kids to do there or go to the park or just like have something we could go do like all day so we weren't like you know having a showing at 10 and then like coming back for half an hour and having one at 11 30 and having to like clean between them like just be gone for the entire chunk of time is way easier in my opinion. The next idea is to set up a system for making home showings easier. So whenever it was time to leave for a showing, I had my system and it was the same thing, the same routine that I would go through every single time and it made it a lot easier and easier to make sure I remembered to do everything and made it a lot less stressful. So I would do all the easier cleaning, with the kids still running around, like washing the dishes 
and tidying up toys and I would tidy the toys and then put the bin up so they couldn't get the toys back out. And then once all the easier cleaning was done, like as much as I could possibly do with them still around, I would take them out to the car and buckle them in. I would give them snacks and drinks and activities to do. And then I would go back in and do more of the finicky tidying that is just really difficult to do with toddlers running around, like sweeping the floor without them like chasing your dust pile around and all that stuff. Like straightening the rugs and putting the throw blankets on the couch and things that they're going to come behind me and undo easier. That's when I would do all the things that were going to frustrate all of us if I tried to do it with the kids around. I also made myself a checklist of things that I would check before I left the house, things that normally I would never leave like this or worry about like unless we were showings, doing showings. So things like leaving all the lights on in the house so that it was brighter and people could see where all the light fixtures were, laying down all the rugs, opening all the interior doors up, unlocking the exterior door so that people could get in because we didn't use a lockbox, putting out the throw blankets and the pillows, opening the blinds, making sure the toilet's flushed, <laughs> yes. I have a toddler that's freshly potty trained, so yes, that was on my list. Then once I was sure that everything was perfect, I would head back out to the car where the kids were still contentedly playing with the toys I had given them or eating their food or something, and then we would leave. So having this routine that I did the same way every single time just kind of helped my OCD tendencies and worrying about if I had gotten everything and I could like actually check it off the list and it actually helped a lot. The next thing is to stay in prayer a lot. <laughs> this whole experience has brought our whole family a lot closer to God because you really have to trust in God and depend on Him a lot more than just normal everyday life. Just not knowing if your house will sell in time or you'll get the house that you want or that everything will line up and there's just a lot of unknowns, a lot of just trusting that God is working it all out for your good even if it doesn't seem like what's in your best interest, it all turns out for your good. I feel like God, send a, God sends us trials like this, even though this is something that was a, a blessing for us, like we get to sell our house and buy a new one, it still feels really difficult, like a little bit like a trial. But I feel like God sends us different trials in life to sanctify us and to just get us to learn to depend on Him more and to turn to Him when we're upset, not to like anything else or any other person. And all of these situations we can use to like help us grow in our faith and our walk with God. Yes, that's cheese. You can eat it, I'm full. Thank you though. And it's important to remember that God foreordained everything that's happening right now, even if it seems shocking or that it's not, it's not what would be best for us or whatever. Like, it's, it really helps to remember that God knew this was gonna happen before it even happened. Like, it's not shocking him. It's not like he had no idea this was gonna end up this way. So that really helps to keep in mind and just remembering to trust in Him and staying in prayer a lot and staying in the Word a lot just really can help ground you and help you remember that this is going to pass and it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't get the house you want. And it just puts things in perspective a little bit more. My next tip is to not get emotionally attached to new houses. <laughs> so I'm the type of person that will immediately get emotionally attached to houses we go look at. So when you're looking at new houses, you're thinking about buying, don't let yourself get attached to them before you know it's actually a good idea to buy them because this is something that's so hard for me to not do and then it turns out to be a big disaster when I do get emotionally attached and I get all sad if it doesn't work out. And so it was really hard for me to stay distant from like picturing us living in this house before we actually bought it. I'll like imagine like, seeing the kids playing in the living room or outside or picturing myself cooking dinner in the kitchen and like picturing where we'll put all of our furniture like I already have all that in my in my brain as soon as I'm looking at the house it's like a little bit excessive and it's something I really have to fight against but as much as you can try not to do that because it makes it really hard to think about it from a logical perspective and to not just make an emotional decision that you know, you just like the house because you can picture yourself living in it. I almost need to not go look at the houses with Luke. I almost just need to look at the pictures on the listing and let him make the decision because just because of how hard it is for me to stay detached from like getting 
so emotionally invested in the house and then having my heart broken when it falls through. <laughs> my last tip is to have a lot of grace for yourself and for your family. Just give yourselves a lot of grace, a lot of understanding. No one is gonna be at their best during this season of life, during this phase of selling your house, of buying a new one and moving and all of this stuff. Your toddler is gonna be way crankier and throw more temper tantrums mm -hmm. and your children are gonna like fight more and hit each other and push each other over and you're gonna be like, what happened to my children? And they're just under a lot of stress and that can be very normal. And like you and your spouse might snap at each other more and even though you like never fight normally. So just remember that it's a phase. That's basically my mantra for life is that it's just a phase, it'll pass, we'll be fine. You'll find a house and you'll get settled back in and everything will go back to normal and this phase will pass and you just gotta trust that that's gonna be true. And at the end of it, you'll be so thankful you went through all the, the drama and the emotionalness and the stress of finding a new house because it will be worth it and it definitely was for us and I'm so thankful that we did, even though it is hard during the process. And you can grow from it in the long run. It can really grow your family, it can bring you closer to God. And so if you just try to look at it as a learning experience, that will help a lot too. So those are all my tips for trying to make this process less stressful for you guys. So if you thought any of these tips were helpful, please give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and head over to my blog and subscribe to my email list. But thank you so much for being here and watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.